Hey everybody, it is Mike. I'm in the, uh, the backyard and today is April, um, it's Tuesday, I think it's the 7th, I don't know. Um, want to, uh, just share on some of the insights I had. Yesterday was a fun day. I went and ran some, um, some necessary, uh, <laughs> essential errands. I had to get some food and I had to stop by at my place of work for essential work. And so the first place which I went to was, um, it was an Amish farm, it's where I get meat. You literally drive up onto this Amish person's farm. And the reason why I'm sharing these stories is because I just wanna give a little insight into the continuum uh, of which this, this whole sort of um, worldwide lockdown this worldwide shelter in place, if you will, um, you know, what I'm at least seeing here in, in, in uh, Lancaster County, PA. So, went to an Amish farm and I've been there a bunch of times, obviously I get food there. And, uh, and this isn't a stand, this is like you drive up onto their property and, and but they're, they're, they're expecting you, they sell there. And uh, business as usual. Um, absolutely no change, uh, both in terms of the people I was interacting with, just like the normal flow of the day, what they look like, all that sort of stuff. So, um, the second place which I went to was um, uh, my place of employment, uh, Urban Edge Farm. And this is staffed by permaculturists and, and, and farmers, obviously. And, uh, there was a little bit of a difference we, uh, a, of how life has changed, but for the most part, there was a very high level of comfort with the way things are right now. Obviously, the, um, the, the uh, unknowing of what is to come, you know, that was, that was new, but other than that, the actual like, change in lifestyle, it really was not that big of a change. And then the third place I went to was a traditional grocery store. And that was friggin' nuts. It was literally outside of a different world. Um, and what was so strange was so many things that have been rolling out just so grassroots, so, so naturally. Um, you know, it just seems to have been perfect for this next stage. And so, the grocery store, which I, I, I went to, like they had each of the aisles set up like, um, like streets, like one-way streets. And I'm certain this is probably, you know, the protocol which, which all grocery stores are going by. And there was, it was, <laughs> it made grocery shopping immensely complex because you can't go back. You can't, like, you, you got to keep on going. You're not supposed to cut back. So it was, it was interesting. And then at the same time, this grocery store introduced, maybe about a year ago, these robots um, uh, on, the, on the floor. And I don't even know what they were doing. They were like R2-D2 type of... R2-D2 like road bots, taller, but just like rolling around in wheels. And so uh, the first time I saw them a year ago, that was kind of an oddity. But, but seeing them in this situation is everyone moving like these automatons and in this, uh, <laughs> you know, almost like the only person in authority was the robot. It was the strangest thing. But this is the continuum, um, this is the continuum uh, which I'm seeing. And... You know, if you, if you go in, if you're paying attention, all the different storylines that are out there, there's a lot of different storylines. And um, this is really going to be the nature of all of these different talks, is getting into, um, you know, how to navigate the different storylines, um, how to recognize them, um, and so forth. How to wake up from this dream, because there's, uh, there's two things which, which I'm seeing. I'm seeing, like, you know, this one, uh, um, this continuum of just, like, the outside world of, um, 
of like the continuum of how this is affecting people from like going to get food from an Amish farm versus going to get food from a traditional grocery store um, and how widely, how, how, how different that is. But the second thing which is so interesting, and that, and that could be a little bit um, upsetting I suppose, or, uh, but the, the positive and the upside is I also want to juxtapose this to what I'm seeing in my own life. Like look around me, like you saw the, you saw the birds behind me. Um, this is my backyard, like I'm, I'm renting some like rinky dinky house, you know, in this kind of like rinky dinky little neighborhood. And it fell in, it fell into mine and Jenny's lap. Like, in fact, we almost were resistant to it. We're like, ah, maybe this is too soon. And it was, it was literally outside of our hands. Like, you know, the moment we had that conversation, for some reason, I kid you not, there was a, uh, we had this conversation when we were living in Marietta in two different apartments. And when, after saying that maybe we don't take this house, this is back in November, we walk across the street, Jenny and I do, to her apartment. We lived across the street from one another. And there was an envelope taped on her door saying, uh, you know, the owners of this building have decided not to renew your lease. Like, you know, she was no explanation, just saying, like, you're going to have to be out by January 1. And we had a place settled or, or available to us December 1. You know, that's this house. And so we just kind of went with it. And ever since then, like, all of this strange stuff has been unfolding. And there's this 57, which has been the... the, the uh, um, the foundation and so now I'm watching this unfold you know I'm, I'm, I'm seeing it everything occur with some degree of awareness and I'm trying to see the patterns in real time and I'm sharing that with with those that are following along but the reason why this I think is significant is um, <laughs> welcome to my world like my world became what everyone else's world <laughs> is like maybe about 10 years ago and so I'm a little bit ahead of the curve maybe. And because of that, like I'm, I'm showing like a glimpse of what's possible or what's to come or what you, we, we can learn. And that's what this is all about is waking up from, from this artificial dream which has been placed on top of the real dream. And this was given to me. Like I didn't consciously, um, I didn't consciously uh, um, uh, plan this and it is so grandiose, like so much greater, like connects greater uh, than my own like personal story that it's like, it's a, it's a larger symbol. And so what I'm seeing, this house was given to me in this, like everything lined up perfectly. I moved in in December, everything got weird in winter and now that springs here i'm realizing this backyard which i never could really appreciate during the the dead of winter as it's coming alive like you know if i would have stayed in in marietta if jenny and i would have stayed in marietta that would have been um that would have been a, that would have been horrible the way that <laughs> you know that that environment is experiencing this quarantine but this place I'm in now is like absolutely perfect. You can't even imagine. And this was forced upon me. And then today, you know, I told you about yesterday. Yesterday, I talked about all of the different things which I saw out on this trip. Well, today, out on a bike ride, I found this place, literally a mile from where, where um, this house is. And it is a biological preserve. Like, it's not a park. It's a biological preserve, and it has been taken care of by people who both have a deep, like, emotional connection to the physical environment, to the earth, but then also from this very kind of, like, scientific perspective as well, like, understanding how ecosystems work. And so what the purpose was, this one riparian buffer they have turned it into this unbelievably pristine biological preserve to be studied to see what the environment looks like if it was not touched and so on one hand i'm in the middle i'm in the middle of it all like if you could really look over this shoulder like literally 400 feet on the top of that hill is an enormous, an enormous uh, uh, 
antenna. Like this is, as much as I've, I've found this like little slice of heaven, it is also like as close as you can be to the, um, to the infrastructure of the dream. And so the purpose of all of this and the sharing and these exercises and everything which we're having right here, because it's gonna to come to an end at some point, at least digi digitally, it's gonna to come to an end. It is hiding within as you learn to see through the dream, as you learn to see through the dream, like in real reality, it will begin to bleed through what the actual lifestyle on this planet would look like and how it's learning how to deconstruct the dream while also developing the imagination to see to see beyond the limitations of, of, of programming really that's what imagination is that's what this is all about so um, welcome you know this is this is this is two way you know I wanna I need a feedback loop but this is to help everyone else who this resonates with find this in their world also because as we will discover that it, this is much more like the Wizard of Oz than you can imagine. So until next time, this is Mike.